plasma membrane. Plasma membrane. Yeah, in this video, we are going to talk about the plasma membrane. Uh, the theories that explain how the plasma membrane uh, was identified. We also have to look at the structure related to function as well as uh, the different functions of parts of the, the plasma membrane. So plasma membrane, uh, this video is following the other two videos on chapter 1.1, 1.2. So this is chapter 1.3 by teacher Patrick Chimuli. You can always pause and then you take notes as we continue. So our question is what do we call a plasma membrane? What is a plasma membrane? So we all know and believe that every cell has a membrane uh, that bounds the, the intracellular matrices from the extracellular matrices. And this is a boundary as someone has a skin that protects him or her uh, from the skin from the uh, the skin of another person. Oh, someone has a skin that prevents his or her internal structures from pouring outside. So this makes sense that every cell, because every cell is a whole unit. So being a whole unit, it has a different structures. I mean, it has a membrane, and this membrane is going to serve the functions as we are yet to see. So number one, what do we call or what do we know about cell membrane? Cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane formed from what we call the phospholipid bilayer. Before we explore the parts and functions of the plasma membrane, there are some key terms you should no, some key terms we need to know. Uh, among them, we have a term called hydrophobic. So the word hydrophobic, you hear there are two words joined together. One is hydro, the other one is phobia, phobic. Uh, phobia, uh, in many cases, it's an English word people use to refer to something they fear something they don't like, something they run away from. Phobia for heights, phobia for chemicals, phobia. So, having an aversion to water, tending to codicent and form droplets in water. Uh, hydrophobic is a term used to describe how molecules react with water. Molecules that are hydrophobic have an aversion to water, are often referred to as water fearing so the word phobia is fear so water fearing molecules are molecules which do not unite with water you find they form different layers from that of water so they are hydrophobic uh, that the term is hydrophobic then another term would be hydrophilic hydro you see it all rotates about water hydro is waterphilic is loving, uh, hydrophilic, hydrophilia, hydrophilic, that's water. Having an affinity with a philic, it's affinity. Affinity is love, love for something or craving for something. That is what we call affinity. So affinity for water, hydrophilic is a term used to describe how molecules react with water. Molecules that are hydrophilic have an affinity for water. Hydrophilic is often referred to as water loving. So those two terms are very much important as we describe the structure of a plasma membrane, the structure of a cell membrane, the structure of the three dimensions of the cell membrane. So hydrophobic, that is water hating or fearing. Hydrophilic is water loving. So the next is uh, is what you call integral proteins, integral. Integral, it means something that is crossing, a trans. Yeah, we have the upper part and the lower part. So something crossing through 
uh, it's what we call integral or trans. So when you hear proteins, proteins are, uh, we have proteins that we are yet to see which help in a crossing from the extreme end of a cell to the upper end of the cell. That is what we call integral proteins. So typically transmembrane proteins with, her, which, with hydrophobic, uh, hydrophobic regions that completely span, spanning, closing through, spans the hydrophobic interior of the membrane. The integral proteins in the plasma membrane penetrate the lipid bilayer from one side to the other. These proteins control the entry and exit of specific membranes from the cell. They also have hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions which help to keep them in place in the membrane. So we are going to see what we call proteins that are important in what we call facilitated diffusion. Uh, but they have two terminals. You can have, find them having one terminal, which is hydrophobic, another terminal, which is, which is hydrophilic. But at least it spans through the length of the membrane. And this is important in the transportation of materials across a membrane. Because we see cells feed. They feed, they put in materials and send out materials. Some of them can diffuse, others are facilitated in their way of entering. So, you will see that integral proteins are very much important uh, when we come to movement facilitations. The next term that I want us to look at is uh, the integral protein structure of a protein. Who discovered the structure of a protein? The hassle to learn about the discovery of a protein uh, went back in the century, in the, in the years of 1935. 1935, the first person to do the understanding of a structure of a protein and came up with his or her theory. Uh, there were two people. The, the, that is called the Daniele and Davison. Danelli and Davison came up with a theory which we call the sandwich theory, or we call it the lamella theory. Sandwich theory or lamella theory. S sandwich theory. So the sandwich theory stated that uh, uh, plasma membrane exhibit what we call a trilaminar structure. That is, a lipid bilayer is bounded by a protein layer on both sides. And in this model, proteins are usually represented in a globular form. Subsequently, electron microscopes are showed the study. So with the sandwich layer, uh, these people believed that uh, uh, the protein is made up of two major, I mean, the membrane is made up of two major things. One, the phospholipid bilayer, and the proteins so proteins on top like you can see a sandwich and then in the middle we see what we call the phospholipid i mean we see the phospholipid uh, structures so the upper is a protein middle phospholipids then down is a protein so the phospholipids are embedded inside so that's what he called the sandwich theory so sandwich theory or the lamella theory was uh, was the first attempt to understand how a cell is done or how a cell membrane was uh, made or the components and then was done by La Daniele and Davison in 1935. Then another person who also came up with an understanding uh, was called the, is, is what is called Lobatson in 1959. 1959, Lobatson came up with what we call a unit membrane theory. Unit membrane theory is a trilaminar pattern. Unit membrane theory, where he proposed and said that the occurrence of a, tri a trilaminar pattern of membrane cells, uh, whereby 
The unit membrane forms not only plasma membrane but also contain other membranes in most of the cell organelles. So it's talking about one unit then uh, made up of other other subunits. So this one was not given a lot of attention. However, the concept and the theory also exists. You can pause and check for more of them. Then we have the third one, which was done by Hyla and Hafman in 1963, which is the latest. And that is where we have the, the mosaic globular structure, where we have the micelles, the micellar theory. The micellar theory done by Hyla and Hoffman in 1963 proposes that, according to them, the plasma membrane includes a mosaic of a globular subunit. So this is where we have what we call the fluid mosaic model. Fluid mosaic model. And the fluid mosaic model is where we get this structure here. So what does he say? He says that uh, a fluid mosaic model, uh, okay, it was, that is Hyla and Hoffman. They propose and say that uh, a cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. All of them were on spot. They don't miss the word phospholipids. They don't miss the word proteins. But the arrangement of proteins and other parts, that's where we were having different uh, conflicting reality or different conflicting information. So with the fluid mosaic model, it is seen to explain and say, that a cell membrane or plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. As you see, you see these seemingly looking substances here, a ball and two tires. On the upper part, that is one phospholipid. And then another one, ball, and then the tires. Or the tires facing inside, and then the tires facing inside, and the balls on the outer parts. So that's why we say it's a phospho. These ones are called phospholipids, phospholipids. So it's a phospholipid bilayer. A layer made up of two phospholipids with the proteins oozing in and out. With the proteins moving in and out. So the, mole the movement of proteins within this membrane here in the phospholipid bilayer has created the mosaic form. To mosaic is to move phospholipid bilayer. The concept is called the fluid mosaic model. Fluid mosaic model states that a, a, a plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer with the protein seen to span in and out in a movement way, like the way you can see water moving up and down. That's where the word mosaic comes in, fluid mosaic model. If you look at this structure, we have the phosphate group and then the lipid part, which makes a phospholipid. That's a conjugated phosphate with the lipid part attached. So they span, they make up the biggest part of this membrane. Then you see this big blue, I mean this big, uh, uh, this big part here, it looks blue. This one here, it is important, it is an indication of a protein. So you, if you are to view this membrane, you realize that proteins are seen uh, moving up going down, moving up, going down in a mosaic state. Some of these proteins, like we mentioned in the introduction, we have what we call, um, they help in a movement, a movement of facilitated diffusion. So you can see that this protein is integral. You see it on the extreme end of the, the phospholipids and also on the lower end. So it spans through. And then when you look at the same again, you will see the cytoskeleton. These are the microtubules as we see crossing around. Then on sides, yes, 
On site, we also have some peripheral proteins. Proteins on site, peripheral proteins. And then, as we move, we also see on the cytoskeleton, we have other attachments. For example, this one here, this one here, and then this one here. In many cases, these attachments are carbohydrates. And they are, they are important in what we call cell-to-cell -cell communication. Sometimes they are receptor sites. Uh, like, you know, we produce hormones, and the hormones attach on, they have different target organs. So they must have a receptor site for them to have an effect on that area. So most of these outgrowths, as you see them, they are important in cell identification, they are important in reception. They are important in cell to cell communication. They are important in acting as a stimuli. So they have very many importances as you see them. And this is why it is hard for different organisms to carry out reproduction because sometimes the receptor cells are, or receptor sites are not compatible. So for one organ or one substance to have an effect, we must have the compatibility of the receptor as well as the stimulus itself. Failure to have the two uh, complementary, we will never have that. That's the same as when we produce a sperm. A sperm of a human of a hemosapien cannot fertilize the sperm, cannot fertilize the egg the egg of a fish. Why? The receptor cells of the egg of the fish are not complementary to the structures of the sperm. So the enzymes cannot, they are not compatible and that way you are plotting a graph of boredom against time. So that's why in many cases bestiality cannot result into a reproduction of viable organisms. So, if we look at this again, we have glycoproteins a glycogen joined together with a protein for example when you see this protein are uh, attached to a carbohydrate so the combination of a protein and a carbohydrate gives us a glycogen and protein remember in our bodies we store as uh, uh, we store carbohydrates in the form of glycogen so if we have any excess carbohydrates we want to use in a structure, we will use it in the form of a glycogen. And that way, when a glycogen attaches itself on a protein, we come up with what we call a glycoprotein. So glycoproteins are those proteins whose ends contain glycogen, and these glycogens are important in it, the functions I mentioned earlier. One, uh, cell to cell communication. Two, receptor sites three uh, identification and so on and so on as you can see we also have cholesterol so this is a bilayer a layer up and a layer down so made up of phospholipids and then across we are having what we call transmembrane uh, transmembrane proteins we also have terminal peripheral proteins inside there we are having uh, what you call cholesterol, we are having uh, glycogens attached to proteins, well, so that makes up the real structure of a protein, I mean a plasma membrane. So you also look at what we call the hydrophobic segments of alpha helix proteins. We have proteins in different dimensions, so this is called alpha, because you see at the end it forms the alpha sign. And then it is, a hel it is a helix because it is, a, when you get it, it forms an X at the end and it's, in, it's hydrophobic. So it hates water. Instead, it loves fats. Something that is water hating, it is fat loving. It can work together with fats but not with water. Something that is hydrophilic, which is water loving, it is fat hating. So it cannot work with the fats or dissolving fats, but can work with a water. So that's why we see that the plasma membrane. Four things we need to understand. Number one, 
it is a phospholipid lipid bilayer. That's number one point. Point number two, it is made up of proteins which are, are seen in a state of movement, moving, oozing in and out of a cell. So these proteins, because they are seen oozing in and out of a plasma membrane or in a, bi, in a phospholipid bilayer, so those proteins are important. And then, number three fact you need to remember, that these proteins on the extreme end, some of them are attached on by glycogen to form the glycoprotein, which are important in different ways they serve activities. So that makes it very important for every IB student to understand the structure of the protein, I mean, of the membrane. So, having seen the structure, take a look at this structure, look at it, understand it, know how to draw, then you can always answer questions regarding this. So, we want to look at now the structure related to function of every part. Uh, we have seen what you call peripheral proteins. Peripheral proteins, uh, these are protein appendage loosely bound to the surface of a membrane and not embedded in the lipid bilayer. They are seen on the surface. And the protein molecules are not fixed in one spot. That's why they are always in a state of movement. So they are not fixed in one spot of the membrane. And they actually float in the fluid. That's when we have the fluid mosaic. Uh, float in the fluid, phospholipid bilayer, or are attached to an integral protein. Are attached to an integral protein. Peripheral proteins are known as glycoproteins. Remember, it's a glycogen attached to a protein because they have a carbohydrate attached. The function in immune response are involved in cell to cell recognition. So the peripheral protein, or what we call the globular, the glycoproteins, have two roles. One, it's for immune response. You remember when cells, to, when, when, when cells are trying to identify self cells from non-self, we shall always carry out the identification process by the. Uh, the appended glycogen on a protein. Different appendages have different codes uh, to mark self against non-self. So in this case, when you look at the glycoproteins on a plasma membrane of a cell, the first is involved in immune response, and number two, it is for cell-to-cell -cell recognition. It's like one important point divided into two for easy understanding. Cell to cell recognition. Number two, uh, number two is immune response. So that's the function of the peripheral protein. So you can see where we have the peripheral proteins. They are here, they are here, and immune response and cell to cell communication as explained earlier alone. Then let us talk about the phospholipid bilayer. A phospholipid has become a, a business in all people's theories. What does that mean? A phospholipid, it's a conjugated term to mean phosphorus group attached on the lipid molecule. Phosphorus group attached on the liquid, I mean on the lipid molecule. This is a chemical nature that the lipids are attached with the phosphates. And these phosphates, they form a compound known as the phospholipid. That's why we say that a plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, meaning I have lipids attached on a phospho, I mean on the phosphorus group. So what does it do? A molecule that is constituent of the inner bilayer of biological membranes having a polar, that means a charged hydrophilic head. So if you look here, this is the head. 
with a phosphate. There is phosphorus attached or phosphoric acid attached on this head, but again, it is polar, meaning that it is charged. It has charges. So polar and it is hydrophilic. So the structure of the phosphate part of this cell gives us what we call a unique feature of a plasma membrane. So it, the part of a phospholipid, the upper part which is made up of the phosphate group, um, it is polar, it is made up of phosphate, and it is polar, it's the head. That's the kind of zero order head that you see on the upper part. So if you look at its chemical components, you see a phosphorus or phosphate group together with uh, the nitro nitrogen and uh, the methyls attached on this part. So that gives it its polarity. Then it is hydrophilic. So it's water loving. It can always combine bonds with water. That's why it's hydrophilic. Uh -huh. And the nonipolar hydrophobic tires. The tire, they are these two units which always face inside the membrane. The hydrophobic tires face inside the membrane and they are water hating, fatty loving. So a phospholipid molecule is composed of glycerol, a carbon compound with the two fatty acids joined the two, with the two fatty acids, with two fatty acids uh, joined to a phosphorylated alcohol molecule. Two fatty acids joined to uh, joined to hydrophobic uh, or joined to carbons and phosphorylated alcohol molecules, as you can see. So because of the hydro the phosphorylated alcohol, it becomes fat loving and becomes water hating. So that's what it does. So the polarity and nonipolarity of the plasma membrane is as a result of a contribution of the phosphor of the phosphorus head of the phosphoric head and then the, the tire. We want to analyze the evidence from an electron microscopy that lead to the proposal of Davison Daniela model. The Davison Daniela model of the sandwich theory, which I explained earlier, is what I want us to look at in 1935 to 1972. So these guys came up with this after the discovery of a light micro of an electron microscope, and they came up with this evidence. Remember, for them, they called a plasma membrane having or being a sandwich of proteins on top and then the phospholipid bilayer inside. So what do they say? If you look at this drawing here, it really speaks about what they saw. Proteins are on top, as you can see, bled on top. Then the phospholipids are in the middle. And that's a sandwich. That's a sandwich. So what did they say? That is on Daniela model of the plasma membrane was the working model from 1935 to 1972. Science knew that the membrane was composed of lipids largely due to the fact, the fact that uh, fat soluble substances easily dissolve in the membrane. This model consists of the phospholipid interior surrounded by protein coats on, the, on each other. So this is what they saw during the early days of learning about this. I think they were right. For them, they realized that proteins are on top and phospholipids are in the middle. That is the Davison, um, Davison uh, Daniela's, Daniela's a theory of, the, the, we call it the Lamella theory or sandwich model. It's easy. For them, they propose that the protein, that the plasma membrane is made up of two layers. The upper, the outermost layer is the protein sandwiching phospholipid bilayers inside. As you can see, uh, this part here where we have the phospholic head, we are seeing the hydrophilic head uh, because this is polar. Polarity, that means water is polar, can, 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 can combine with this polar head. 
but this one because it's nonipolar hydrophobic a zone nonipolar it doesn't combine with water it is fat loving can combine with the fats to form bonds and then the hydrophilic zone on up so you see up is so this is a sandwich of proteins sandwiching the phospholipid bilayer just that and then your marks are done that's the Davison and Danieli model of the plasma membrane which you call the lamelli theory um, lamelli theory so what is false about this what what the what is false about this is what gave us the singer and the Carlson model which we call which we call which we call the plasma the fluid mosaic model while arranging of the phospholipids were correct there are as issues that with the arrangement of the protein they are also called amphipa amphipathic and they would be blocking the hydrophilic heads of the phospholipids from from aqueous external environment the model also did not allow for the different structures and functions of the membrane so this made it not easy for someone not to see so then when we come to singer and carlson model was proposed in 1972 and remains the current accepted model uh, the current uh, accepted model uh, current accepted model of the plasma membrane it is also known as the fluid mosaic model uh, while the arrangement of the phospholipids remain in the same it is the location of the proteins that differs so the model remains the same but the location of the proteins we so we have the external proteins uh, the peripheral proteins we had the transmembranes we also had uh, proteins in the middle crossing proteins and then those which we looked at as glycoproteins so this model shows them embedded in a bilayer as their integral proteins and peripheral proteins as been discussed before so this image was turning point for the model of the plasma membrane it shows the bumps and grooves on the inside of the membrane these bumps and grooves are the membrane proteins it supports the idea of proteins embedded within the membrane as opposed to the outer protein layer proposed by Davison Daniela in the sandwich model. So, in the sandwich model. Therefore, the fluid mosaic model, this is the structure as seen before. We look at the phospholipid bilayer, extra comp extracellular components, we are seeing the couple, the glycoproteins, uh, glycogen attaching to we also have the glycolipids they are very important in cell cell communication and immune response we also see the cholesterol in between in the hydrophobic tires we also look at the structure of the integral proteins and then the peripheral proteins then you also see the cytoskeleton so this drawing here where you see a transmembrane or integral protein uh, is explains what you call the fluid mosaic model which we said that uh, it states that the membrane is a bio is a is a phospholipid bilayer made up of proteins oozing in and out of the layer in uh, in a waterly way a waterly form so what do we see next when we see this Drawing of the fluid mosaic model, this is a must. You must be able to draw the fluid mosaic model, which is the current model of the plasma membrane as any student, and ensure you draw each part of on, uh, each uh, part to the scale, including all relevant labels. Your drawing should include a clear drawing of individual phospholipid molecules using circles for the head and parallel lines for the tires. You must also include a range of membrane proteins, that is, membrane proteins, integral and peripheral proteins, including glycoproteins, and also uh, glycoproteins. So you shouldn't miss those four components uh, well represented on your drawing for better passing. 
using the phospholipid form by layer in water due to the amphiphatic properties of phospholipid molecules. The head of the phospholipid is a hydrophilic, which is water loving, can easily get attracted to water. The fatty acid tails are hydrophobic because hydrophobic phospholipids are, are considered amphiphatic molecules due to the act that they have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. So the head of the phospholipid is hydrophilic. The fatty acid tails are hydrophobic. Phospholipids are considered amphipathic. Amphipathic means they have both properties. Amphi, amphi from the word amphibians. Amphi two properties. Amph amphibian life on water and life on life in water and life on land. Amphi. So amphipathic meaning it has both properties. It is both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So I can ask you which of the following uh, structures are referred to as um, um, amphipathic. That means it is the phospholipid layer. It's amphipathic because it has the, hydrophobic, the hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails. So it has both regions, the water-loving regions and the fat-loving region. A water-loving region, which is a fat hating, and then the fat loving region which is water hating so that's where the word amphiphatic uh, comes up from that's where the word amphiphatic comes from phospholipids form by layers in water due to the amphiphatic properties of phospholipid molecules the phospholipid molecules are arranged in the plasma membrane due to the way they react with water because the polar heads of the molecules are hydrophilic, they are arranged so that they are always facing the internal and the external fluid environment to the cell. External fluid environment to the cells. Uh, as you can see, this is the form. So you can see the amphiphatic nature, the, the water-loving heads and the fat-loving tires always in the state of uh, it's not settled it's in the state of mosaic so that gives the proteins the ability to ooze in and out to ooze in and out ooze in and out and that gives us the fluid mosaic model phospholipids from form by layers in water due to the amphiphatic we are still explaining Due to the fact that the fatty acid tails are hydrophobic, they face inwards towards each other and away from the fluid environment. The fatty acid tails in the center of the membrane are attracted to each other and the, phospho and the phosphate heads are attracted to, are attracted to, the phosphate heads are attracted to each other and the phosphate heads are attracted to the surrounding water and this makes the structure of the plasma membrane very stable, very stable, very stable, very stable. Membrane proteins are diverse in terms of structure, position in the membranes and function. So here, I want everyone to draw their attention on what you call membrane proteins. Membrane proteins here, they serve different purposes depending on the location, depending on the position, depending on the structure. So structure relates the function of that protein. So there are many different types of membrane proteins and they occupy different positions, the plasma membrane, depending on their structure and uh, function. The following slide summarizes the different types of membrane proteins and their functions. So here is where we come up with the different functions of proteins, uh, the different types of proteins and their functions. One, we have one which we call the hormone binding sites, as I mentioned earlier. Hormone 
binding sites. Number one, a site exposed on the outside of the membrane allows one specific hormone to bind based on its shape. A signal is then transmitted to the inside of the cell. So as this is the mechanism in which hormones work, remember we have the endocrine system that produces hormones and they are transported by blood to their target organs. So those target organs have what we call protein receptor sites that are complementary to this, pro this protein which is a hormone coming. And once this hormone attaches on the site of that protein, it stimulates it to carry out the necessary reactions to have changes take place. So proteins which are found outside the cell membrane, they are as receptor sites, what we call them target organs for attachment of hormones. Number two, immobilize the enzymes. We have proteins, some proteins are enzymes located in the membranes, either catalyze reactions inside or outside the cell, depending on whether the active site is on the inner or outer surface, grouped so that metabolic pathway may occur. So some proteins are enzymes which are responsible for catalyzing reactions in that area. For example, when a human sperm meets the ovum of a female of the same species, so we shall produce the acrosomal enzymes which will go and digest the membrane of the ovum to allow the nuclear fusion. So you can see now that's one importance. So some enzymes are important in the catalyzation of reactions so that we can have the different functions taking place. Number three, protein three, we call them cell adhesion proteins. That is cell adhesion proteins. Cell adhesion proteins are adjacent cells may hook together to provide either permanent or temporary connections. This forms a junction referred to as a gap junctions and tight junctions. So we have, sometimes you see this membrane is attached to the other membrane. It is as a result of what we call the cell adhesive proteins which form temporary gap junctions or tight junctions whereby we can have one membrane attached to another membrane to form either a temporary structure and that is where we have the gap junction or a permanent structure which we call the tight junction that is done by cells that is done by proteins cell adhesion then the other one is communication we have cells which communicate Cell to cell communication, whereby, hey, are you part of us? Yes, I'm part of you. What's yours? I have the same identification of a protein like you do. And that one, in many cases, we use it in immunity, in, I mean, in immunity and different other ways. For example, the proteins involved in cell to cell communications have an attached molecule of a carbohydrate, which provides an identification label for the cell, in the brackets, the glycoproteins. So proteins with, which you see with the, with the glycogen on them, which we've called glycoproteins, their role is to cell, to cell communication and identification to prevent destruction. Remember in our immunity, our immunity is made in the sense that we have what we call the patrolling cells. Patrolling cells, they are cells which will always be moving along your body, looking for cells which are the alien cells. The moment we identify alien cells in your body, that means they will not be having compatible glycoproteins. So, because the, glyco, the, the compatible glycoproteins, which is MHC1, is different, we call it major histocompatibility complex. That's the glycoprotein major histocompatibility complex it is the one signal which uh, patrolling cells read and realize that hey you belong to us hey this is a foreigner and it invades you and sends it to the to the natural killer cells to come and attack we have the channel proteins which we've called the trans proteins the ones you've seen moving up and down 
that are important in a, uh, in, a, in a passive, in a facilitated diffusion. For example, channels are passages through the scent of membrane proteins. Each, each channel allows one specific substance to pass through, through the high concentration or low concentration. So that's when you see those channels. We have the protein, the, we have the voltigated protein channels, iron gated protein channels, and then it's voltigated or iron gated. For them, they allow a specific iron to go through. So you will get to know much about this when you study what we call transmission of an impulse across across transmission of an impulse across a, an axon membrane. You see the iron gated protein channels and forward gated protein channels. Those channels are always closed. They will open on the signal. If it is iron gated channels, they will open on the signal of ions. If it is uh, uh, if it is voltigated, it will open on the signal of a certain voltage that has reached it to open to allow some materials in and out. That's why we call it channel for passive transport. We also have what we call the pumps for active transport, pumping proteins. So pumping proteins release energy from ATP and use it to move specific substances across the plasma membrane. The energy is used to change the shape of the protein. So basically, these ones explain the different location and then function of the different proteins that are found on the plasma membrane. Common binding, which you call the receptor sites, are uh, immobilized enzymes, which you call enzymes, responsible for carrying out our reactions. We have the cell adhesion, that is gap junctions and tight junctions. We have cell to cell communication, which is the proteins communication and then identification. Channels for passive transport and also pumps for active transport. So it's important for you to pause this video. Pick these different functions of proteins and use them for your own consumption because it's very important for a student to know them. Glycoprotein is a membrane protein that is covalently attached to a carbohydrate. They are used for cell-to-cell -cell recognition and play an important role in immune, immunity or immunoresponse. So glycoproteins, as you can see in this picture, uh, if this is a bacterium, its glycoprotein is different. So how does it work? Surface carbohydrates on cells serve as point of attachment for other cells. Infectious bacteria, viruses, toxins, hormones, and many other molecules. For example, you will see a glycoprotein here that can be a, a point of attachment to a virus. We get it captured from there, and then patrolling cells come and pick them. It can be a bacteria, so it's like they are traps. Hmm? To trap, and then a keep for a big cell, to come and then destroy. How about cholesterol? What's the importance of cholesterol? You've had people saying, I am a, a, I'm allergic to cholesterol. I need food which is cholesterol free. We have different food substances in the, in the supermarkets which talk about cholesterol. So what's the importance of this? Animal cell membranes contain cholesterol, which plays a role in stabilizing, in stabilization and maintenance of the integrity of the plasma membrane. So the cholesterol is important in providing that fluid set, whereby uh, it creates that mosaic state, mosaic state, the gelatinous state where uh, uh, proteins can easily swim. So that state of ever constant movements, that's the importance of cholesterol. So it's very important in this business. As you can see, phospholipid, glycoproteins, uh, glycoproteins, membrane, 
So this gratinous part of this part is brought up by the cholesterol which we take. So cholesterol is a component of animal cells and is another amphipathic molecule involved in the cell membrane. The, the, the hydroxyl group of the cholesterol, hydroxyl group of the cholesterol molecule lines up with the polar heads of the phospholipid molecules and the rest of the molecules tacks in with the fatty acid tires. Uh, so what is the importance of cholesterol in animal cells? So membranes, cholesterol in cholesterol in animal in mammalian membrane reduces membrane fluidity and permeability to some solutes. So, some solutes. So, cholesterol will affect the fluidity of the membrane and it has different effects at different temperatures. So, at moderate temperatures, the cholesterol will reduce phospholipid movement, which reduces the fluidity of the membrane. And the location of the cholesterol molecules prevent the close packing, packing of the phospholipids. This helps prevent the membrane from solidity, from solidifying, from solidifying temperatures or drops. So, to avoid the fluidity of the membrane to be solid or to be too much like a free molecule, so we a free movement of some solutes, we use this to get its function. Uh, so it's been beautiful to do this video with you so i kindly ask you to subscribe on our youtube channel chimoli patrick you also go and check us on youtube on Facebook and Twitter. Pause and take this tutorial serious as you make yourself ready for IB exams, for A level exams, uh, for A2OS exams at uh, Cambridge, for local national exams, in case you really want to do more. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for learning with us. There are always tutorial lessons for IB and MYP science that you need to, 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 to follow and then study. Thank you for now. Have a blessed time.